David, as a philosopher of physics, um, what do you think of the efforts of recent times, particularly here at the FQXI conference, to elicit uh, advanced ideas in physics, particularly quantum physics and different structures, to explain consciousness as being something other than the, the, just the simple biological emergence of what happens macroscopically among neurons in the brain? Sure. This is always kind of difficult because um, some of the smartest people I know and some pretty good friends take these approaches very seriously. Uh, I find it very difficult to take it seriously at all. It seems that we don't think we need a fundamental physics of digestion or a fundamental physics of respiration, even though these are difficult biological processes that right. we're really sure. lacking in sure. for. Consciousness, people seem to think, is different. And the reasons they think it's different, I think, are intuitions and hunches, which can feel very plausible, but when you really interrogate them, are hard to sustain. Well, I mean, the thing is obvious that, uh, as one famous philosopher said, the uh, uh, consciousness is an output of the brain as urine is an output of the kidney. <laughs> now, the difference is, and, and it is very complicated how the kidney filters and all of that and the other organs as well, the difference is the phenomenological inner movie, mm. the inner subjectivity that we all know that I have as an individual and I, and I, I, I infer that you do, uh, but um, you know, I can't never know that you could be, everybody else in this world could be a, an inner zombie, as we say, and I could be the only one conscious. We'll never know that. But that phenomena is, 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 is a radical difference, isn't it? Well, you say that. You've, you've passionately made that case. But assuming that this consciousness is not actually kicking the electrons and atoms around your brain, and almost no one thinks it is, then you'd have made just as passionate a case, just as convincing, if you were one of these zombies. No, uh, uh, for certain, that's absolutely true. But that argument can be utilized that because I'm knowing it myself, therefore, and, and anybody else, and, and you could envision a, a zombie doing that for exactly the reason that you said, therefore there has to be something else. Well, I and that argument is used exactly the reverse. I don't believe you can envisage it. I mean, what, what you're doing when you're envisaging it is you've got a, a sort of picture in your mind of a, of a person or a robot or whatever, and then you're just thinking to yourself, well, that's not conscious. But you don't know that. I mean, I mean, by analogy, and this, same, is, a, this, is, an anal this is an analogy of Dan Dennett's, but I could imagine uh, a, a cell that wasn't alive. And, I, and here's, here's me doing it now. I'm imagining a cell, vivid detail, and then I'm thinking, this cell isn't alive. But that doesn't really mean that I've imagined a non-alive cell. I just haven't thought hard enough sure, about sure, it. Turns sure. out, it turns out if you think really hard about how, living, how that cell works, it's, li it's living. Yeah. You, you, made a, you made a point that, uh, and, and seemed to think it was self-evident, uh, which to me it's not, uh, that uh, consciousness can't interact. Now that's one of, of a whole series of theories of consciousness and philosophy of mind, uh, that consciousness is an epiphenomena, that it's sort of a, it's the foam on the wave, it mm. doesn't cause anything, but it just rides along the surface. That's just one theory, it may be right, but, um, but you can't dismiss all the well, other let, Well, let's, let's try it. Let's suppose that there really was a new substance, a, a, con um, a consciousness site, which is not described at all by any physics we have so far. But actually, when we look really hard at the brain, we find that our, we get a much better theory if we recognize that the electrons are being pushed around by the consciousness site. And we do lots of experiments to support this. OK, fine. Now somebody comes along and says, I can imagine somebody whose brain was just the same and had, and had all the same consciousness site, but wasn't conscious. And then the question just goes to one regress further. Um, it, it, anything that we're describing in the language of internet interactions and, and dynamics is equally open to this objection that says, well, I can imagine all that going on without consciousness. So if you think that objection works, you don't really improve things by supposing there's an interaction. Uh, OK, but you're, I think you're still left with the primary problem, which is the phenomenal phenomenology of what we feel and sure. see being a step function different, being a radical difference uh, from e e everything else we know in the universe. How's it different? It, it, it's different because um, if, I, if I stub my toe yeah. and, and we see uh, lots of uh, spikes along the C fibers that go to a certain part of my brain, that's one thing. Uh, and my, my intense feeling of pain and knowing what it's like to feel that is, is a radically different thing. Now, you can correlate them perfectly, uh, and that's why many people have come up with an identity theory, which, in a sense, is, 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 is a perfect scientific answer, but it's, it seems conceptually absurd but when to say that my pain is this. My, my, they're correlated, but the feeling of the pain 
uh, versus and, and just seeing uh, sodium ions and potassium ions going through membranes yeah. and all of that. I mean, there's so, it's so, so, so radically so different we have categories. A, we have a really deep intuition that these are radically different, and I share that intuition. What I don't think we have is anything that goes beyond an intuition. We don't have an argument. We don't have, we don't have um, a deduction that says these are not the same things. And attempts to get it just mean more intuitions come up. And I just don't think intuitions are a good route to truth in science. Lots of things are really counterintuitive. It's really, really counterintuitive that, 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 that your pain literally is um, a whole bunch of you know, electrical, structural, functional goings on in the brain. But um, the, the fact it's not counterintuitive, that it's counterintuitive, doesn't make it false. So, so what, what the conclusion of what you would say is, is that, that we live in a universe, in, in, a, in a structure of existence, where it is possible for electrical activities to literally be the, f the feeling of consciousness. I don't think we live in a universe where it's possible. I think we live in a universe where it's actual.